So tell me of what you heard about this week, how much of that did you already know from South Carolina history book? Like five percent. Five percent? That's why it's so important what you were doing to be here this week to learn these stories. Well, getting a drink of water out of a white only water fountain. I could have been jailed. So take it really seriously. Ask questions. It's something you don't understand. Let us help you understand it better. But we want you to have a wonderful experience in this International African American Museum that has taken 23 years to build. I represent almost 50,000 people. That's a lot of folks. You are trying to make the best decision based on the information you have and do what you think is in folks' best interest. We listen to the people we hear from. We get all sorts of emails, phone calls, pop-up visits, depending on where we might be. We spend time learning about what happened way back yonder so that we can understand what is going on around us now and be able to prepare for what may happen in the future. I mean, it's incredible because, quite frankly, I have not seen a program in one week that has as much exposure as you're going to get this week to the low country, to the civil rights community, to the activism. The purpose of Charleston Civil Rights and Civics, also known as C3 for short, is to teach the untold civil rights history of the low country and build bridges between students of diverse backgrounds. We created this program because we have to understand our history and we have to understand the depths of the scars from that history in order to understand our present and change our future. This program has probably been one of the more inspirational programs that we've ever hosted at Kids on Point, being able to see the kids learning about the history of where they were born and where they grow, are growing up has been incredible. We start the week chronologically, grounded in our history and grounded in the enslavement period. So we start right here in Charleston at the amazing International African American Museum. From there, we take the students across the Low Country. We go to St. Helena Island in the Penn Center. We go to downtown Beaufort to learn more about Reconstruction and some of the heroes of that move moment in time like Robert Smalls. We go to Orangeburg to talk more about the Civil Rights Movement, to talk about the Orangeburg Massacre, to visit the All-Star Bowling Lane. We are able to visit with renowned photographer Cecil Williams. We come back to Charleston. We look at art and activism. We hear from civil rights icons that are based here. And then on Friday, we end with the call to action around voter engagement, voter registration, what it means to be in elected office, and what it means to stay engaged in the political process. We want to incorporate a variety of learning mediums into this program. So the students aren't just hearing from people, but they're actually interacting with people, having small roundtable discussions. They're getting their hands dirty and taking photographs. They're picking up things, they're touching, they're talking, and they're working together to really learn this history. I think the, the cool thing about this week was actually getting to meet and speak to legends that you've heard about, you've read about, and to actually speak to them and hear their stories and actually visit and actually experience it um, for yourself. With C3, with Kids on Point, we collaborate. It is important to bring others into the mix because different people have had different experiences and the kids relate to different things. I believe that C3 provides uh, tremendous value to these young people. The stories that they are learning will serve to make them uh, better Americans, better South Carolinians, and more informed Charlestonians. That's why I wanted to be a part of this important effort. I am very excited about this program. It gives me warm, fuzzy feelings because sometimes we think about history or kids think about history being somewhere else and not within their own community in which they live. And I hope it inspires them to think about issues that are important to them and how they can advocate and organize and, and make change that's going to affect not only them but the, the young people who come behind them. I think it's important for um, students especially to know the history or their history um, so that they can one carry that on to future generations and so that they can learn from it.
too often we see Charleston as like, oh, it's a place that you can recruit people from or it's a place that you can visit, but it's not that it's a place where you can actually learn from. So I'm excited to see how the program activates the city of Charleston. So I think telling, you know, students about what happened in terms of their ancestors, in terms of their relatives, and to make those stories real and pertinent, that's what C3 is doing. And I think that is something that is long overdue and I'm so happy to be a part of this. A lot of the information that they were taught this week, I didn't know until my freshman year of college. I even learned a lot with them. So them having this information uh, so early uh, in their education, I would say is very important. I would love to see this program expand um, and even to the college level, so that way we could uh, bring more awareness and um, educate more students. So what we want to see in future years of this program is that more supporters are coming in and really embracing this program. I would love this to become uh, a program that runs two or even three times a year. And so we need your help. We need the help getting the word out about this program. A critical part of this program is to make sure that any student can participate. If you want to help, you can go to kidsonpoint.org slash C3.